what do you do when all of a sudden God comes into your life and says, I want you to get out and I want you to share my love with as many people as possible. Let's listen to the story of a man whose life is changed by that call of God. My name is Father Mike Manning. God bless you. I'm a Catholic priest. One of the joys of my life as a priest is certainly being able to talk to you here on television, but it's also the chance of getting out oftentimes on weekends or for parish missions and talking to people face to face. And one of the joys I have as a parish here in Southern California, it's, uh, it's called Blessed Teresa Parish, uh, named after um, Teresa of Calcutta. It's a very inauspicious parish. It's, um, <laughs> it's centered in a moose hall, uh, that organization, and we're there. It's very simple. But it's alive with the Holy Spirit in a great way, and the, the love of God just shines forth. Well, it's those kind of experiences of my going and preaching and being with people that kind of give me the juice of the Holy Spirit, if you will, to be able to continue and share with you. And uh, one, of the, one of the neat things that happens is you can not only talk to people, but you can also listen to people and you can understand what's coming from them. And that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be listening to the spirituality of a, of a friend of mine from this parish down in a place called Winchester, California. Uh, Al, God bless you. Thank you very much for coming Thank and you. being with us. I'm glad to be here. It's a, it's, a, it's a good experience for me to come and I have to travel about 40 miles, but getting down to uh, Blessed Teresa and being able to experience the spirituality. And one of the little treasures of that spirituality is yourself. You've, uh, you've come very close to God, haven't you, in terms of wanting very much to share your love of God with others? Yes, yeah, so over, over the years. And, and, and uh, how this happened. Tell me a little bit about closer. your faith. Uh, how, uh, the beginnings of your faith. Were you, were you raised in a, in a Christian experience? You know, I wasn't. My, my mother and father weren't regular churchgoers, but my dad knew that it was important to go ahead and, and go to church. So he would allow me to go with the kids that, around the neighborhood that went to church. So in, on, in the beginning, you were inclined to want to go, huh? Sure. Okay, sure. even though your mom and dad, were, which is kind of interesting yes. because a lot of us, our faith is very much dependent on the direction of mothers and fathers, but mm -hmm. you have a little bit of a sense of independence there. Well, huh? I think sometimes within your own heart, you know that God's calling you and that you know that you want to do something like that. Even as a even young as boy, a, you felt a, that. A, even as a young boy, yeah. Okay. And, Probably when I was around five, I remember going into a darkened room and, and a, a lady saying, uh, would you like to receive Jesus as your Savior? And I said, sure. He says, you know, Jesus died for our sins and he saved us. And, and he, she said a simple prayer and I said yes as a, as a small child. And you can remember that as kind of the pivotal, if you will, the turning point? Right. As a, as a uh, Christian, as my Christian developed, uh, my Christian faith, I went to a lot of different churches. And, and saw a number of variety of churches, Baptism, Church of Nazarene, and other churches. And as I got closer and closer to God, I, I read the Bible a lot as I started raising my families. I, sometimes I'd sit my kids on the floor in the front room and we'd talk about a scripture. We, I'd read a scripture and we'd really? pray together. And I did that with my young kids when they were little. Not a lot, but I did it a little, a little bit. And um, so they, they started learning the faith a little bit from me. Um, I remember I checked with my mother about baptism because I, I don't remember being baptized. And so I actually went down to La Jolla Cove and got baptized in the cove full submersion. Hello, okay. Yes, and, and I, I was a firefighter for uh, 30 years and that was towards the first part of my firefighting experiences. I joined a, a group called uh, Firefighters for Christ and the chaplain there baptized me. Wow. And then. Good. Not too long after that, I had married a woman that was in the Catholic faith. So mm -hmm. I um, signed the paperwork and agreed to ra raise them as Catholics, and we put them in Catholic schools. And I always thought the Catholic faith was very, very rich and strong and, and was really towards uh, 
God and the family and keeping. So you had an so, admiration, even though sure. sometimes when you come with the the non-Catholic experience, uh, there's a more of a negative attitude towards the church. I, I did have some of that because I was a Protestant at the time. You know, okay. I never formally joined a church. So when people say, "Well, you were uh, you changed religions. You you were uh, you know confirmed." You know, in the I, Protestant wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, I never okay, was never, confirmed never in the Protestant church, never joined one, so I never had this transition. I, I believe that I was always Christian, and now I take my faith and I worship God in the Catholic tradition. And that's, and it's comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. It brings up an interesting point, Al, and, and there's, there's an awful lot of talk right now, um, and I might be hitting it too much, but I think it's dominant, that there's an awful lot of, they call them nones, N-O-N-E-S, that when people are asked to make a check as to what their religious persuasion is, um, Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, Muslim, or whatnot, then there's a little place where it says non. Um, they're finding that it's almost like 27% uh, of people are those nones that are, well, they want to be spiritual, but they don't want to be involved in a religious experience. You're kind of Speaking to me of that right now, a great deal of your life was just moving away from one organized experience to the mm -hmm, other, mm -hmm. but really not just <laughs> knowing letting, that letting I, your I, feet get close to it. I but could pray on my own. That's all so, you wanted. But yeah. how do you? How would you speak right now to those people? But they're probably listening in right now, who are saying, "Well, I don't know that that fanciness of the church, the organization, and whatnot. It seems so contrary to the." Uh, spirituality that I think is so much richer in my own heart. How, how would you speak of the importance of perhaps reaching out to a community, reaching out to a, a denomination to express your faith in Jesus? Well, you know, it's sort of interesting when you're talking about checking those boxes because I remember going into the military. I was in nuclear submarines. I was in the U.S. Navy. And I remember checking those boxes and looking at that. And I had them put on my dog tag, not Protestant or not Catholic, but Christian. Just leaving it that way. Just okay. Christian. I had them put Christian on there. And there's some people that are, you know, nons, but I believe that everybody has within them a spirit that is calling out to God and that uh, the ones that have that God could share it. And we could talk to other people about sharing a God that is loving, this agape love that is unconditional, no matter what, what we've done or... Our sinfulness is overlooked. Well, what about taken what care about of. what about saying, okay, I'm going to love God and I'm going to feel good about God, but then I'm going to have to live with other people, and try to express that faith with people that maybe would disagree with me, or maybe would sing too loud, or pray too soft, or pray too <laughs> pray too fast. Uh, how important is it that we we find a community that we commit ourselves to in this commitment to Jesus that we have in spirituality? I think it's very, very important. As you read the scripture, which I did a lot of by myself before I got into a community, I took a look at the scriptures and saw that they talked about community and the Acts of the Apostles specifically. And so as I, as I did yeah, that, I, I realized... The Acts of the Apostles, this is the church. This I is realized I needed the church. And, and because one of the things that we do is we encourage one another. We help one another grow in our faith. God gives us our faith. But at the same time, we share our faith with others. And so when we share our faith with others, we encourage one another to grow stronger in the faith of God. It's really true. I, 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 it's kind of the whole situation of someone coming up and saying, do you love Jesus? Yes, I do. Well, would you stand in front of five people and would you tell them about that? And, and standing in front of and all of a sudden, you've got to be able to make that integrated into your mind and your heart and your body, and you've got to express it. And that expressing, in many ways, clarifies and strengthens my faith. Are you with me on this? Yes. As a matter of fact, I have a, um, a degree, a bachelor's in education, and so I have I was a firefighter for 30 years, and I did a lot of teaching. I started to work for the National Fire Academy and traveled around the country teaching. Now what I do is I travel and I talk about Jesus Christ. So the teaching has moved to a new level. That's right. So tell me a little bit, let's get back into this travel. So it's your commitment to Christ came all the way back when you were five years old. Yes. Um, but then you started moving and kind of looking at a whole bunch of different denominations. Right. You fell in love with this lovely lady, and, and uh, she happened to be Catholic. 
that seemed to be an influence on your life to the perhaps let's move in that direction in terms of that commitment to a community. Are you with me on that? This definitely is, yeah. yeah. I am, I, I'm the director of the RCI program at Blessed Teresa what of Calcutta. What does that mean, RCIA? What does RCA, that mean? Uh, right for Christian Initiation for Adults. And what does that mean? So what we do is we bring people into the church that don't know the Catholic faith but want to become a member of the Catholic Church, and we put them through some training, some classes, and it's not only just the didactic part that you teach out of a book, but it's also parts of faith and that we share with one another. And so I have a number of people that come in and help me with that program that speak about their faith to new members. Which is precisely what this program is all about too, just for you to be able to share that beauty of what you're saying, that, uh, that the Lord spoke to you even at a very young age, despite the lack of influence, the strong influence of your parents. Oh yeah. But God was able to move in a great way and you You've looked through everything, and right now you're finding that in the Catholic faith you're able to experience that love of Jesus in a concrete and real way. Mm -hmm. You know what I want to do is I'm, yeah. we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna take a break now, and then I want to get back and I want to hear some of the, the nuts and bolts of what you have experienced and then what you're going to be able to share with some of those people in that, in that welcoming group that you're, you're talking to at the church. Okay. Stay tuned. We're going to get into some of the nuts and bolts of what it means to be a to be a believer in what it means to be Catholic, and then how do you deal with many of the questions and struggles that, that are involved? Stay tuned. Thank you very much for watching the program. Thank you also for sending in your donations to allow us to continue. It's so very vital. I'd like to come back to you after you've sent your donation by giving you a gift. It's a gift that is written by a friend of mine, Father Marty Padovani, a member of my community, Divine Word Missionaries. The title of the book is Healing Wounded Emotions. Father Marty is a counselor, and he's going to come to you as you read this book with deep insights into some of the topics that are really at the heart of the pain and struggle that you're going with. Pain and struggle with emotions. There are some topics here that I know you'll relate to. Take, for example, anger. How do we deal with anger? Anger with other people, anger with ourselves, even anger with God. Father Marty is going to open some doors and bring you the peace that you're looking for. What about forgiveness? Forgiveness of someone that's hurt us, or even forgiveness of ourselves. Then there's the other, the other overriding problem of emotion that we experience time and time again in our world today, and that's the problem of depression. How many, how many people have I run into that are just overwhelmed with the shadow of depression in their life and they don't know how to get out? Father Marty, with the wisdom and prayer that he gives, is going to help you in a rich way. So, as you reach out and try to help our ministry and allow us to continue, please ask for a copy of this book, Healing Wounded Emotions by Father Marty Padovani. And together, may we bring about the peace and the power of Christ. Uh, Al, one of the questions you're, you're dealing with young people that have perhaps been on the outside as you were looking around and searching things, they've come to the Catholic Church and they're saying, we're really in interested in making this our home and letting this community happen. I'm curious to hear, as you're the director of helping these people to get, get their feet uh, settled <laughs> on the ground, what are some of the important things that they raise and questions that they have and um, what, what, go, what goes on in their minds especially? Well, you know, many of them are, they're from all ages, all groups, uh, it's adults. And so what happens is some of them have sort of analyzed their faith and they have this faith that is sort of in this box. And I try to open that up to them. Mm. And we open up to other uh, areas. For instance, within the Catholic tradition, we say uh, Hail Marys and people that, uh, aren't familiar with the Catholic tradition, don't understand us praying to 
the mother of God. Praying to saints, and this becomes a very right, that, right. That's and a big so, bone of contention. So be, it does. And so we have to explain it to them a little bit that do you ever ask anybody to pray for you? And, and everybody will say yes and say, well, we're asking the Blessed Mother of Jesus to pray to her son to God for but the us. Problem, the problem usually so, comes with, yes, but why do we pray to her and why not go directly to Jesus? Well, it's, it's exactly what I was saying earlier is that you ask other people to pray for you. Many people. And so you ask, you know, for instance, I had a grandson, my first grandson. I have five grandchildren. My first grandson was this big. I always say he's a pound and a half. But he was a pound and 10 ounces. Okay, wow. Pound and 10 ounces. He had to stay in the hospital for three months after he was born. He had tubes down his yes. throat and his nose and everything. And I asked everybody to pray for him. Everybody. Yes. Didn't matter who they were, I was asking people to pray yes, for him. Yes, yes, yes. And so we're doing the same thing when we pray to the saints or mother, or we ask other people to pray for us. We're, we're praying with as many people as we can. Going to Jesus, who is the That's one right. intercessor. That's right. The Father. But That's the right. other thing is that we have to, we have to struggle with in this question is that um, we must believe that when people have died and then gone to heaven that they are alive. There That's are many right. people that want to say, well, you know, the saints are, you know, those that are in heaven are really just kind of asleep, if you will, waiting to be wake, woken when, when Jesus comes again. But we believe that they're alive in a very special way, in a strong way right now. I, I believe in God's Word, and in God's Word He says, God is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. And also the beautiful thing in Revelation where they talk about the army of people that are around the throne uh, right now, you mm -hmm. know, praising mm -hmm. God and alive, and, and, and those are the yes. representatives of all of us that have died. Tell me, what other questions do they go through? So you talk about the saints. What are, what are some of the concerns that happen? Well, well sometimes the tradition and, and how we run the Mass and what's going on, why we, you know, I usually go to a service and there's a pastor, you know, and now you have a priest and a Mass. Yes. And so one of the things that I really point out is that our whole mass, our whole worship is all Bible-based, and people don't know that. People well, don't wait, realize tell me, tell me about that. What do you mean? We have a first reading, a second reading, we have a gospel reading. All of those are directly out of the Bible. And then some of our, we have a responsorial, we have, uh, we use the, the Psalms. And so all of these are directly out of the Bible. So 95, 99% of everything we say is directly out of the Bible. People don't realize that. People don't know that. And even, so, the, even the celebration of the body and blood of Christ, we're taking from the Bible, the Bible, taking from the words of Christ and, and, and what he Bible. did at the Last Supper, you know, doing, doing like that. So the Mass, and I, I oftentimes think too uh, of the word ritual. Um, we, uh, we're, kind of, we're, we're kind of frightened by that, and I think many of the people that are the nuns are also the people going to, to uh, the uh, non-denominational churches. Right are frightened by ritual, but gosh, rituals are vital to our life, aren't they? I mean, I've got to have a ritual to get up out of the bed every morning and get to, <laughs> get, get to the bathroom and then get to my breakfast and get to right. work. We have rituals, but there, there can be sacred rituals too. What a, one of the things I point out is that as, as we progress into the church, first of all, we're moving from the outside secular world into sacred space. Yes. We're moving into the church. As we go through our processes, our masses, our rituals, often I've said, I want to get as close to Jesus as I can be. Yes. But I don't want to become Jewish. Well, he worshiped in the rituals as a Jewish person. Yes. And so that Jewish tradition has transcended from the Jewish tradition into the Christian tradition. And now. so there's a beautiful the shadow, Church. there's a beautiful reality of the memory of so much of Jesus as the Jew that, that we were bringing, mm -hmm. bringing to life in a good way. And, and as we go through the profession of faith, if you look at it and you say, I believe one holy Catholic apostolic church, the C in most everything is printed is a small C. Small C. And that means the universal church of Christ throughout the world. Throughout the world, and that's what I believe in in a strong way. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, Al, I'm, uh, you've, you've written a beautiful book, and it's called uh, Getting to Agape, A Lesson on Love. And, and uh, I've read the book, and I'm very impressed with the beauty of what it says. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about it. Does it come from this... Uh, 
this, this wrestling with, with your faith in, in God and, and understanding how love is the center of it. Agape, what does agape mean? What, what's the word mean? Within the Christian tradition, it stands for God's unconditional love. God's unconditional love. So now, agape now, but, is but, the but, highest uh, level of love possible. So, so I'm a sinner and I've, I've failed in my life and, and I've done, done something that I can consider perhaps unforgivable. Are you saying to me that God can actually forgive me? He forgives everybody for everything. 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 Even something that might be serious. Everything. Even when society says, Poof, you're forgotten, you're, you're no good. But when, you, when you. you ask God to forgive you, it has to be sincere. Okay. It has to be with a contrite heart. What does you that mean? What is a contrite heart? What well, is that? it means your sincerity is so strong that you're, you're, you're saying, I don't, I don't want to be like this. I want you to forgive me. I don't want to do this. I want to turn away. I want to change my life. I want to be a transformation. And so as you ask God to forgive you, if it's with a contrite heart, if, if, if it's with sincerity, if it's with sorrow within your heart, He will forgive us. And does that mean that I can start all over again? Yes. I have a second chance? Yes. Really? My and probably God. a third, a fourth, and a fifth. Ah, yeah, 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 because yeah. what happens is we're not perfect. And even though we, we ask God to forgive us about something, we might again fall into that, that place that we were at once before and sin again. And let's we'll say, I've got, let's say I've got a habit of sin, and boy, I'm going um, to I'm going to get rid of it. And then I say, I am, sir. And I'm sincere. And mm -hmm. I ask for forgiveness. God right. forgives me? Are yes, you? yes. And then I fall back again. Boom, maybe it's with alcohol. Maybe it's with pornography. Maybe it's with drugs or something. And boom, I'm back there again. Yes. And, it, and if it keeps happening, I kind of get discouraged and think, maybe I'm being a hypocrite by coming back to God over and over again. How do you respond to that? The people that are usually trying to justify their behavior and their response to certain situations call other people hypocrites. The people that are trying to change and convert and transform their life towards God are calling us just simple sinners that we're trying to overcome what we're coming. Now, one of the aspects is we can't always overcome things on our own will, by our own self. We have to realize that the Holy Spirit lives within us. And as we live our life, we could ask the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and to help us to overcome these fears. And there's and a these power. Anxieties. That, and that's these, enough power hey, to be able to turn things around. God, 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 God can do God, anything. God can do that in me? He can do anything. Oh, boy. Okay. God's all powerful. He can even change my life and, and bring, it, bring it to the peace and the joy that I'm looking for. That's correct. How, how do I do that? What, 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 how does that happen? Is, it, is there some formal prayer that I need to, to say to, to, to come back to, to get that beautiful thing that you're talking about? There's, there's no formal prayer. There, there are formal prayers within the church that are very significant and, and good to read and to know and to pray. But we could just go to God on our own and say, I'm a sinner and I want you to forgive me and, and show that contrite heart to understand. See, God knows what's within. Man only knows what he sees yeah, what you and see hears. from the outside, yes. He doesn't know what's in the heart. Man doesn't know what's in our heart. Man, man you know, people look at people and call them, a hypocrite. Would you be willing to, to pray with us? How about we pray together? And if you are hearing what we're saying and you're thinking, oh, you know, maybe, maybe I need to accept Jesus in a deeper way. Maybe I need to really accept the fact that I need to change and, and accept his forgiveness and love. Would you be willing right now to pray with us? We're going to take a little break. I want you to think about this as we're listening to this commercial. We're going to come back and we're going to pray with you. And God can make your life completely transformed and changed into a new, a new woman, a new man. It's very important that you share in this ministry by offering your prayers and also by offering your donations to allow us to continue. We need your help. And as a sign of my, my support of you, for your support, I'd like to send you a copy of this book by a friend of mine, Father Marty Padovani, a Divine Word Missionary. The title of the book is Healing Wounded Emotions. This book is going to touch such topics as 
How do you deal with anger? How do you deal with forgiving others? How do you deal with forgiving self? And oh my, one of the big important topics. How do we deal with depression in our life? Father Marty is going to give you a perspective of a Christian who has been able to touch the heart of a solution and true healing. Remember, ask for the book, Healing Wounded Emotions. The joy of the ministry is not only talking to people, but also receiving, receiving their prayer requests. And we mm -hmm. get people from all over the country that are, that are writing in. Um, and, and, and we pray for them. And we pray, uh, we pray with the confidence that God is going to work miracles in their lives. I'm just going to, a couple of them. Ebbett from Georgia, asking for myself and, and, and my wife. I had a stroke, and my wife is caring for me. Oh, look at that. Janet from Ohio, Henry, who has cancer and needs healing. Um, also, Jackson is in the hospital, and Tammy needs a job. Here in California, Harold, for himself, peace and health. And that's the last one I want to mention here, although there's many. Charlotte from Arizona, diabetes. She needs the gift of salvation for her work. Let's join hands. I'm, I'm going to talk to you right now, and I'm going to ask you would, you, would you please maybe close your eyes and give your heart to Jesus in a beautiful way right now. Jesus, I, I acknowledge the fact that you are God and that you love me. I acknowledge the fact that you, you embrace me with a love that's so un understandable, so complete. At this moment, I want to say I am sorry for my sins. I reject them, and I want to embrace you. And I believe that you are my salvation. You are my hope. You are my key to the peace and the joy and the fullness that I'm looking for. Flood my life right now. Make me experience in a strong way that you are God. You are a God that loves me deeply. I praise you. I worship you. I adore you. And I love you very much, Lord. And I, from this moment on, with all of my weakness and all of my fear, I surrender to you. And I give my life to you in a mighty way. And we make our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Al, thanks very much for being with us. God bless you. And continue with your ministry. And, and I pray that you, too, listening to this man who's gone through all kinds of ups and downs and ins and outs and has reached out and found you, you will find God, too. And may Jesus' love for you always make you smile.